In tonight's Biz Blitz, it's, uh, is Internet a right? President Obama is pushing to expand affordable broadband access across the country. But uh, Hadley, companies like Google are already doing this, aren't they? Where does the government come in on this? It shouldn't. Internet is not a right. I always go back to John Locke and natural rights, negative rights, when the question of is this a right comes up. Of course, Internet is something that adds a lot of ease and convenience to our lives, but it's not something that the government should have a hand in providing for people. Yeah, and, and uh, last time I checked, the Internet was still, still something you and I can get on mostly free. we got to pay an ISP. But public libraries typically offer the service. Yeah, I, I think, though, that I, I'm opposed to everything government involvement but this maybe you can I can sort of understand because there could be safety issues involved here too like they need internet access for a lot of things maybe police departments and fire departments and things like that so as you know the government's really only role is to defend our country and if this is part of the defense well, of it then I'm then I'm okay with it Liz that brings up we started the show with this hack on, yeah. on, on, on CENTCOM and so where is the government's role in this I think it's not a right. I hear, uh, Teresa makes a good point, but I think enshrining, I mean, it's a privilege. Uh, I mean, does this mean that every company service is a right? That, that then you can enshrine it, uh, any company service has a right, and that means more government encroachment uh, into that service. I think there's another story behind here, behind this push to make it a right. I, there's a big push to push uh, a lot of new government yeah. out there on the show today. Meantime, issue two, 18 states now seeing gas below two dollars a barrel this just as saudi prince al walid tells our very own maria bartiroma that the era of a hundred dollar oil is over lizzie I, I hear some, some oil people saying no it's not over we're going back to a hundred this year yeah i mean the, the dollar is strengthening there's a combination of reasons half of the plunge in the oil price is due to the fall in global demand that tells you there's global sluggishness out there but you're right when the economy worldwide turns around oil will pop back up this is not inevitable that you're going to see oil at these levels uh, forever so you know the, the thing is when oil comes down though it is the cheapest stimulus though for US oh. consumers yeah. it's cheaper than a payroll tax cut or even the president's own stimulus plan right it's a in your bigger quicker pocket. bang for the buck right in your pocket OPEC still wants it around eighty dollars too though so there's no way that it's going to stay this low they, they can't handle it if it is Hadley, why aren't we having a, a Senate investigation on these oil companies <laughs> driving these prices down so low? Sure. You know, this is a political and uh, geographical world market that we're looking at. So I would never say never when it comes to prices for oil in the future. We could see $100 barrels of oil again, but I also agree with Tracy in the near term. It's not going to stay at $50 a barrel either. So this is something that impacts the entire world, not, the, not just the United States, although producers are suffering through this very low price uh, point right now. So are you, uh, Liz, I didn't get, where do you think oil is, are you think oil is coming back? I think it'll come back, but not for a while. I think it's going to stay in these trending around these levels for a long time. And, you know, this tells you when you have oil dropping, it means the U.S. government have to be the first responders right. responding to every crisis with the U.S. taxpayer money. They can let market forces take over. $200 billion is what could be put back in consumer pockets because of the plunging gas and heating oil prices. Well, then that's, yes, then it's wintertime, so a lot yeah. of people get advantage of that. All right, on to issue three, iPhone separation anxiety. It's a new study that shows that people freak out when they don't have their phones. Where's my phone? I know, see, <laughs> I, I sort of buy this, Tom, because we've gotten to a point where this is my contact with my kids. If I don't have it and, God forbid, something happens, I, I would be very nervous. I work across, uh, there's a river between us right now, so this phone is my only connection to them right yeah, now. Yeah, but Hanley, I get to immediately look up your wiki page to find out, you know, everything about you. So how could I go without my phone? Yeah. <laughs> Instant gratification. People have become so dependent on smartphones, not just for communication, but it's also our GPS. It's also our camera. It's a one device uh, for all uses kind of tool. I didn't need a study, though, to tell me that people have separation anxiety <laughs> from their phones. Just go out in public. Everyone is staring at their iPhone, whether they're reading a news article or simply avoiding the awkward social interaction of talking to other people face to face, which is really a lost art. Well, and that's where the sociologists are all worried. The psychologists are worried about our our children won't won't know how to deal with other human beings about all of this. But it, 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 Liz, when I go out the door in the morning, I I 
pat my, make yeah. sure I've got yeah. my phone. Yeah, and I lose my mind if I can't find my phone. And, and I agree with Tracy, it's a way to keep in touch with your kids. But remember the time when there was not even any voicemail and we had those answering machines at home that we would check the answering no, machine? No, I'm too young oh, to yeah, remember right. that. But you know, that was called, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but the, you know, Tom, that was called reality. That was called living in the real world. I just feel right now there's so much ne neurotic obsession with uh, being on your phone and texting and all that. I but don't I think that's living. But I have to say the world is different. Like when we were kids, my mom five minutes from home she didn't work a tunnel yeah. and bridge away like yeah. and you can leave the doors well, unlocked and there were people home to check on the kids and it's knowledge different. knowledge is power and and those little machines uh, can give you you know I don't have to I go mean, to the I encyclopedia could track, I could track the else. pedophiles in my know. area now yeah you know I couldn't do All that right. before it was just crazy uncle Charlie crazy down the Liz Hadley <laughs> crazy uncle Bob thank you all very much Meantime, after uh, skipping out on France's unity rally,